<laughs> but I didn't get home until the meeting is called to order at 701. State for the Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, and indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. May I have a motion to approve tonight's agenda? Make a motion to approve the agenda. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And um, I need an approval, uh, excuse me, a motion to approve the open session minutes from December 16th, 17th. Motion to approve the open agenda meeting um, minutes from December 11th. Is that correct? 16th. 16th. It's, it's Sorry. actually the 11th. I apologize. Okay. That's a uh, typo on the agenda. It yeah. was the 11th. Okay. Okay. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Are there any community comments tonight? Um, I just have a, a question. Today, um, the calendar went public, the updated calendar. Um, I was just wondering about the March 21st and 22nd um, parent-teacher conferences. Just wondering if they're tentative or if they were approved and good to go. Approved and good to go. Okay. Thanks. Anything else? Okay, on to the superintendent's comments. Okay. Good evening. Um, you have in your packets the complete NISDEC uh, enrollment report, uh, which we receive usually right around the holidays each year. Um, and this came up uh, <coughs> earlier in our budget subcommittee meeting, but I think it, it, it's something that, based upon the experience that we had last year, we need to watch this kind of carefully. Um, as I put in the background notes, last year NESDEC um, predicted, based upon birth rates, um, that we would have 50 fewer students within the district, kind of looking at historical trends and live birth rates from uh, 2012 in both Memden and Upton. We ended up with a positive, uh, an additional 23 students instead of that uh, decline. Uh, some of it was a temporary spike that we um, saw um, in babies born in 2011 versus babies born in 2012. Uh, but a lot of it was um, probably directly attributable to the amount of kids matriculating to the high school, um, where we were looking at historically more in the ballpark of about 140 or so kids matriculating to Nipmuc, we ended up with more in the ballpark of about 160. We literally have the number of kids going to BVT as well. So um, there, there's, there's a lot of variables, um, but I do want to call to your attention that once again, they are predicting um, right now our official October 1st enrollment as far as kids from Menden and Upton. Uh, K through 12 is 2,078 kids. Um, they're predicting that we will have 25 fewer kids uh, next school year for our official October 1st. Um, and again, a lot of this is largely based upon looking at this, as I point out, um, the enrollment uh, as far as looking at the births in both towns. So uh, this top line uh, with the green squares represents the actual real enrollment. And then uh, the darker line represents five years prior how many uh, babies were born in a given calendar year. So we were fully anticipating a spike going from uh, 2011 to 2012, and hence uh, the kindergarten enrollment going from 16 to 17. So we are anticipating a decline down. Okay, but unfortunately, um, in doing these enrollment projections, NESDEC heavily relies on this live birth data 
Um, and it also looks at historical patterns as well. So Menzin and Upton, like the overwhelming majority of uh, communities in the Commonwealth, are experiencing a decline in population and decline in enrollment. But I think something that we've got to look at very carefully is also migration. How many new families are coming into our two communities? How many um, new housing construction permits are happening in each community? So I've, I've started a dialogue with both Kelly, uh, but also with Margaret Botarenko, and kind of looking at this very, very carefully as we progress through the FY19 uh, budget. I think very conservatively, now realize, if you recall from, uh, I usually don't go as severe in the enrollment decreases uh, as the NESDEC projection. Last year's projection was 50 fewer. I think I put in my budget presentation something like 30 or 35 fewer. Uh, now they're saying 25 fewer. So I wouldn't be shocked if our actual October uh, first enrollment is somewhere in the ballpark of probably level from exactly where we are right now. But I wanted to point that out to your attention. I wanted you to have that data, that full report, uh, which the district receives. Because it's actually very interesting. It breaks it down historically, but it also breaks it down by each of our individual communities as well. So are there any questions on that? Second piece I have tonight is just a promotional uh, piece. I know our uh, MUF, our Ed Foundation, has been very much hard at work in promoting, once again, uh, the Harlem Wizards coming into district. That'll be a week from this Friday, the 19th at 6.30 uh, in the Nipmuc Gym. Um, uh, I think it was at least three or four years ago in which they came in and they did uh, a couple of fundraisers, the most current one for both of our PTOs. Um, they raised upwards of about $8,000, so it's a nice little uh, event. And uh, I know we've got some real strong go-to people, kind of spearheaded by Julie DeZutter. Uh, overseeing this and promoting this, so like I say in the background notes, anything that you can do to get the word out would be terrific. And then last but certainly not least, you also have in your packet the year-to-date expenditure report uh, for the FY18 budget. Um, is there anything that you want to highlight? Um, it doesn't really show up in here as much. With, I'm concerned about a couple of things. We've been challenged a little bit by our health insurance this year in that we always try to budget some extra money to cover people that switch into our plan from, say, their spouse's plan, children, younger teachers that are no longer on their parents' plan and switch on to ours, people that get married, go from an individual to a family. We've basically eaten up everything that I accounted for and then some. So we're actually going above what's budgeted in our health insurance right now. So it concerns me a little bit. Um, we've also had some challenges with the HVAC systems, both here and at Clough, that have exceeded their budget amounts. Um, offsetting that is other things. So I'm, you know, I'm not raising the alarm bells, but there are some things we're watching. As always, the big thing we watch is snow and ice. And um, so far, we've been OK until last week. Um, but we'll see how it goes as the year goes on here. But that's usually where we get the offset that helps us out. Um, but the budget is pretty tight right now. I'm, you know, I'm not as comfortable right now as I've been in previous years at this point in time in the fiscal year. So we just have to keep on monitoring. I mean, I check it daily. So other than that, if there's any questions. Um, we'd like to move on to administrator's comments. Um. So I've asked John to come. Um, I know this is at least the s second year for the financial wellness fair, and I'm correct me if I'm wrong, John, I think it's our third year of doing the 21st Century <coughs> Learning Conference. Yes. Um, so I think some real exciting things happening with both of these, so I asked John just to come to uh, share a little bit about what our students have to look forward to over the next couple of weeks. Great, thanks very much. Uh, we appear to be ahead of schedule, which is good. 
told you I'm five minutes, so this gives me like, what, 20, 25, 30 minutes? <laughs> you know, I probably thought to get too much advantage, but Happy New Year, thank you for having me in. As Joe said, we're in a really good spot right now, um, exciting time, and this is an exciting month where a lot of the things that we talked about in our school improvement plan a couple of months ago are starting to come to life now. Uh, we took a few minutes with the faculty today. As I said to them, I think it can be easy to miss the forest for the trees because there's so much immediacy in the work that we're doing and people are working so hard um, and taking on this work with energy and enthusiasm. But uh, if you look at it as individual activities, I think you can lose the understanding that this is really all parts of the larger big picture in which we're getting ready for that redo of our vision, mission, beliefs, and um, the big documents that drive us. But every activity that we've been a part of on this roadmap is really adding to it, from the Food for Thought lunches to the lead learner meetings, uh, the book chat we have coming up this week. And I mention that as sort of a lead-in because I think what's going on at NetMock over the course of the next few weeks are really highlight examples of, um, of the kinds of learning that we want to see going on in our school. So the first is the financial wellness fair. As Joe said, it's a repeat of what we did last year through the leadership of Beth Hennessy, and this year, too, the students who are on her steering committee, Nate Vance and Tony Richardson. I think they both presented to you last spring and talked about it. They've done a great job taking this on as a DECA project this year. And essentially what will happen on Wednesday is that our sophomores and juniors will uh, role play a 25-year-old. They've all filled out interest inventories and surveys to sort of identify what their personal interests are. And they will be assigned, according to those interests, an entry-level position in a job that might be something they're in when they're 25, with an entry-level salary, a 25-year-old salary. And it's essentially the game of life come to life. They get their profile, they get their credit score, they get what they can spend each month and each week, and then they go in through our gym, and with the help of community partners and some sponsorship, sponsorship particularly from Milford National and Unibank, uh, we have people who role play the different ways you spend your money, from uh, rent, how big of a place do you want? Do you want to have a roommate? Do you not? What are you going to do with your cell phone plan? Do you want to have cable? Do you want to have files? What's your internet plan? And then your kids go through, and I think they very quickly realize that our wants aren't, can't always be met by our paycheck, and then they're going to make some tough decisions. But the role play of going through in a, in a, um, a profile that they can see themselves in in a few years is really powerful. So last year I had kids leaving this activity saying, Mr. Clements, this was the best thing I did in my whole high school career. This is so amazing. Um, I was worried the first year. We had about an hour and a half. And quietly, looking at the management of the event, I thought in advance, we've got way too much time. Uh, they're going to be done quickly, and they're going to be hanging out in groups. Not at all. It wasn't an enough time. They got done going, visiting each vendor, each group, and then went to the middle section where they could work together, collaborate, figure out how to make difficult decisions. They were so invested in this. and. Um, it's just really exciting that we get to bring it back again. The sophomores and juniors who are going through have not been part of this program. So last year it was juniors and seniors. And it's something we like to keep going. Uh, it takes a lot of organization and a lot of prep work. And thanks to Beth and the kids for their work on this. Uh, but it's exciting. It's going to be a good event on Wednesday. So uh, that's, that's one event that we have coming up that we're pretty excited about. And then also we have, in the end of the month, our 21st Century Learning Conferences. This is, believe it or not, our fifth conference. And I'm happy to share out this website, which kind of catalogs what each of them look like. This one is um, Winter Carnival theme, Learn What You Love and Love What You Learn. What I like about this one in particular is that it really puts student interest and students' passions at the front of the learning experiences as opposed to taking a back seat. So often we tell our kids, here's the curriculum, here are the standards, here's what you have to know and learn and be proficient with. And with this day, we flip the model. In a lot of ways, I say it's what the future of NITMUC is going to look like. Not that every day is going to be this way, but that it provides more opportunity for kids' voice and interest to be central in the running of the day. So we started it um, back in November. And I'm going to ask all of you this question in just a moment, so be prepared. The idea was learn what you love, love what you learn. And so we brought them in for a school-wide brainstorming session, embrace that winter carnival theme, and ask them if you had uh, an hour, a half day, or a full day, to learn something new, what would you want to learn? And I think initially, it's deceptively simple. It's, it's not always an easy question for our kids to answer. We so often tell them what they need to learn and why they need to learn it. We don't often ask them that question. But you can see, kids came down. We, I don't want to say we bribed them there, but we bribed them there with popcorn and music and turned the lobby into a fair-like setting. And their answers came in. You can see we filled these 
um, sections in the lobby, and you saw personal finance, um, what's life like in college. Uh, we had kids asking all different kinds of things. Once again, for the second year in a row, when we've asked this kind of school-wide brainstorming session, taxes came out as the number one student interest. Wow. Believe it or not, they're really interested in taxes and financial models. So it goes along with what's going on on Wednesday. But let me throw the question to you. You had an hour, half day, or a full day. Learn something new, anything at all, what would it be? Photography. Photography. That's pretty good. That's actually my answer, too, how to use lighting and photography. Yeah, we had a few of those. We're going to be running a session uh, called Instant Exposure with an art teacher and a math teacher. We're going to be spending a full day with kids, helping them to understand um, not only what's worthy of taking a picture, but how you get it to look just perfect. They were going to be outside in the woods for part of the day. They're now adjusting their plans because they're not going to be in the woods at all this morning. <laughs> what do you think, Sean? Oh, God. Well, i got a lot of half days, so I'm, I'm kind of doing this already. So I'm, I'm reading books around, um, around computer science. OK. Great. Yeah, we had definitely had kids interested in computer science. Huh? Technology is something to do with writing and like like skills, yeah, like Google skills. Yeah, I like stuff. that one. Mm -hmm. I'm going to power hers, too. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? Joan, come to you, too. Um, I would either go for cooking, like a, a cooking class of some kind of different cuisine that I don't know, um, or economics, because that's something I never studied as an undergrad and always wanted to know. So I'm signed up for an edX class, actually. Oh, awesome. <laughs> Great. And that's what we want for our kids. We want them to be curious enough to find, to be lifelong learners. It's a kind of a trite phrase. But really, at the core of it is, I don't know if you saw Maureen's blog post from this weekend, it's this idea of wondering and being curious and having that be a natural part of your philosophy and your way of life. Joe, what do you think? An hour, half day, full day? Full day. Intense reading. Quiero aprender más español. would improve my We could have guessed that one. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. The, the cool thing about when we asked the kids, just like when, when I asked you, is that they didn't, they didn't blow off the question. They gave us real answers, and there was a lot of confluence, and you were, it was very easy to pick out the themes from what they were interested in. And so you kind of have, I put together just some, some of the core themes. You have sessions on uh, financial wellness, and we're using Sketch again, so I can send you the link so you can go through and see all the sessions and also who the presenters are. And if you click into any of the sessions, you can take a look and see what their bio is. So Jennifer Kane's a mom of kids in our school, and she's a teacher over in Hopkinton. She is uh, passionate about uh, crocheting, and she's going to run some sessions on crocheting for the day. Um, our community was awesome, and I'll talk about that in just a second. Thank goodness you were early on the agenda, because look at me go. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, we had several themes. Financial sessions, so kids, particularly kids yeah. in DECA, were interested in Excel. They wanted to know how to use Excel and what, how it's going to show up in the workplace. Um, the taxes session, we have, um, uh, I think it's a CPA coming in, working with one of our math teachers. And then we have a business teacher and math teacher running a session called How to Be a Millionaire, and talking about investments, understanding investments. So those are that's one kind of theme. We have college and career prep. So Phil Robokevich is a dad in, in our school, and associate dean for academic success in his professional life is coming in to talk about what's your major and why should you care, the session that he's running, how to write the college essay, how to get the competitive edge. And I mentioned how to get the competitive edge. That's uh, Kristen Mayo, who's the parent of a seventh grader in our district not yet affiliated with NITMUC, but giving up her time. She works at Staples, uh, has run a recruiting program for their um, going to universities, I believe, and showing people what Staples careers look like. She's coming to work with our kids for the day, so that's pretty exciting. So there's another theme is kind of creating and design thinking, so Cricut printers and 3D printing, how to use those. A lot of sewing uh, sessions. Our kids are very much interested in that. I don't know if you saw a blog post they did earlier this year, some tech kids taking their ability to turn scrunchies and monetize it and make a small business out of it. Uh, crocheting, as I mentioned, some interest in the arts. We have a uh, author of children's books coming in, talking about how to illustrate kids' books. Um, our music teachers are running sessions on how to play the ukulele for the day. Instant exposure, which I mentioned, is the photography one, and then an improv apalooza, where kids are learning the skills of improv. Health and wellness sessions. So uh, two fitness uh, teachers, wellness teachers, and history teacher running a full day session on how to develop a lifelong wellness plan. Sessions on healthy relationships, how to make friendships, how to keep them. Um, then you have some sessions that are just about exploring. So exploring technology on a construction site is one of them. There's all kinds of ideas. These are sort of one-offs where kids had a particular interest and we were able to work with community members and get them in to help us out. 
What's really cool about this one, and this came out of our uh, November or September lead learner meeting, that's teachers and kids together, was the idea of what are the assumptions we make about school that we could challenge in this conference. And one of them that came up was that teachers need to be the one in charge of the learning. Teachers need to be in front of the room. This was the first idea shared in our group share out that day. And I loved it. And uh, we've taken that and run with it a little bit. And so now we have students who are offering sessions too. So we've got two kids who are really interested in blacksmithing and have taken that interest into Generation Think this year. They're going to be teaching kids how to use um, blacksmithing tools, how to actually, I, there's a great permission form for that, but trust me, we're looking <laughs> <laughs> um, We've got uh, Aletta Barros, who's um, very interested in STEM fields, showing kids how to use the camera on a cell phone as a microscope. Um, Libby McManus, who's uh, got her own food allergies, is going to show people, yeah, I think it's something about cupcakes, she's showing them from a teenager's perspective, how to take care of yourself if you're dealing with food allergies, session upon session upon session, and they're paired with either community members or teachers in the school. And so it flips the paradigm where teachers are going to be opting into kids' sessions. And I think it reinforces that idea that we are all learners. There's no such thing as a person in the school who is not a learner. So when I look at the day, there's just lots to be excited about. Um, in, in addition, we're making it feel like a conference. We're making it feel fun. So we've got some food from the popcorn and cotton candies. Kids who are doing cotton candy as part of the 21st century skills class. That was something they're interested in, so they're running it for the day. Uh, I've got an ice sculpture in the courtyard that's going to be done for the day. The raffles will go on. So it's going to be fun. We want it to be a day that kids are excited about. Um, we want it to be a day that kind of challenges assumptions. We want it to be a day that kind of lays some groundwork for what the future of the book is going to look like. Not everything's going to work perfectly. But we're going to learn from the things that don't and figure it out. And I, the kids have been great, but I can't tell you how thankful I am for our faculty. Who, I, I think there are a lot of faculties out there who would be scared about a day like this. And I have people who have opted into two half-day sessions. And you, know, you have conversations and say, you know, you don't really have a scheduled break. How are we going to handle it? Well, we'll work it out, John. We'll take a break here. I'm not really worried about that. I need to offer it twice because of this. They're buying in. They're interdisciplinary. They're trying new ideas. Um, it's just, a, it's, it's a great place to be. I say it all the time. I don't take for granted the place I come to work every day. So anyway, a couple of things I'm excited about and uh, I think they're emblematic of everything I'm excited about every month this year. It sounds very exciting. And I think that it actually looks like it would probably expand into a two day session instead of a one. There's so much stuff going on. Right, yeah. It, like it, it seems like it'd be hard for kids to choose we hope so. There's a lot of really interesting stuff. Yeah, that, and, and initially, Dorothy, when we went to this, the attendance was low on the first one. And um, there's a lot of our upperclassmen who were like, oh, this is a brand new activity. I'm not, we don't need to be there. I've got other more important work going on. And we've seen the attendance start to come back. And we, really what we want with these days are these are the days you don't ever want to miss yeah. because mm -hmm. you're so excited. It was in the um, AP Bio Symposium. They were sharing their projects last week. And I was asking kids, why did you pursue this project? Why did you put so much time and energy? And one of the ones that stood out to me was a, a girl who said to me, I learned about CRISPR technologies in last year's 21st Century yes. Learning Conference. And it really sparked my interest, and I haven't had a chance to follow up on it. So when I, this came along, I jumped on it. But I love that That's idea great. that this day sparked an interest that they're looking for another time to pursue something like that. Are any of these, uh, are any of these projects or pursuing the projects after four years or so? Have you seen any patterns develop that we can utilize for 21st century learning for the future? Well, we've definitely seen patterns in what the kids are interested in, which is great. Um, we haven't ever run the same conference twice. I would say this one and the one previous were similar, but the last one was what's something that all kids should know but adults never teach them? That was the last theme. And so there was a lot of overlap with learn what you love and love what you learn. Um, I think if, if I had to take some takeaways away from this, it would be that when you trust kids and ask them what they want to learn, they don't take advantage of it. They're, they have a real interest, and they are worthwhile. And even the ones that may initially sound frivolous, when you press them and say, well, tell me about why you want to learn that, they do a great job not only telling you why they're passionate about it, but why it's meaningful and why, it should, why we should invest in it. Yeah, good. Yeah, it's great. Cool. I think she want to go back to high school again. I know. <laughs> Thank you. Much, much more fun than when I was in high school. Um, subcommittee updates. We had the uh, budget subcommittee is first. We had an informal meeting tonight um, 
beginning to um, look at things. It's very early in the process. Um, the expenditures were reviewed for the FY19 budget. Um, the next meeting is January 25th. Uh, there will be much more information at that after that meeting um, due to the governor's budget coming out on the 24th. So um, it was more of a conversation tonight. Um, and we'll have more information for you at the next. Actually, yeah, the 29th is the presentation of the first pass of the budget. Yeah. Next on the agenda is the Golden Apple Awards subcommittee. Which we need to um, pull together. Um, so I'll reach out to a few members who have done it in the past and looking for any volunteers from the committee that are interested in reviewing um, the nominations. Any interest? Well, I think I'm signed up for it no matter what. <laughs> You're in, Sean. Yes, I know. <laughs> You're in. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I can help if. Okay. I'm going to try to find a parent from the community <coughs> to listen as well. That sounds great. And then I'll also have an email to coordinate with date. Could I volunteer for that, Diane? Absolutely, Heather. I would love that. Thank sure. you. I will, um, I have your email, so okay. I will include us all in an email to kind of nail down a date. Okay. Perfect. Great. Thank you. Next on the agenda is um, old business. We have none listed, so we'll move on to new business. Okay, um, just as an FYI, um, I included in your packet uh, copies of the parent, staff, and s student surveys for the K-12 Insight Survey. Um, what is in your packet is a copy of exactly what was administered back in May, June of 16. And keep in mind that uh, K-12 Insight is a school quality and school climate survey. So I think it gets at the heart of uh, a lot of questions. And, and if you, those of you who are on the committee recall, um, after we got the data back in the summer of 16, I believe it was reviewed here at the school committee level uh, pretty early on in September. And it very much was used to um, drive our school improvement plans. Um, so the mindset is we will uh, use that once again uh, for the purposes of um, kind of seeing growth over time or how things have changed in schools because now that we have the baseline data. But the intent also will be this will be a terrific data point uh, for starting our strategic planning process uh, this coming semester. Um, so the mindset right now <coughs> is to use that survey, um, but to also add some additional items that kind of get a part of what our, all of our stakeholders really want for our schools moving forward. So the mindset would be um, to add some items, again, not too many, because again, you don't want a survey to become too, too cumbersome with regard to the number of items, but maybe to have a section of um, short answer questions um, that, and, and I, I, I got to give credit where credit is due, um, which John refers to as aspirational questions, where think of, you know, very short answer things like, a, fill in the blank here. I believe people learn most powerfully and deeply when. Or beyond enabling high achievement, i.e. test scores, grades, MCAS, and so on, some of the characteristics of a successful school are. Um, above all, I want school to help my child to be blank. Uh, beyond connecting with friends, each school day my child most looks forward to. Beyond understanding content knowledge, I want school to help my child with. So items like that, that kind of get at the heart of what is the quality and what type of modern learning do we want in our schools. So um, 
you know, again, as I say in the background notes, I'm all ears to hear your ideas. Um, we tentatively have planned with uh, K-12 Insight uh, a window of January 22nd to February 5th, which is two full weeks for administration. If you recall, they handle all of the administration where they send out the links, they'll send you the harassing emails, <laughs> If you've forgotten, actually I should say reminder emails, they manage it, all the web-based applications and so on. And you know, if you recall, we had a very, very high response rate. We did extremely well. Um, so I just, I, I, I put that on your radar screen and if you'd like uh, any further input, by all means. So you, you have a, the guy has a deadline for that input probably. So uh, sooner rather than later, yeah, probably by uh, a week from today. Okay. Okay, so um, Jen Mannion really wanted to be here tonight, but unfortunately she went home sick within the first hour of school today. So right before this meeting starts, I just got a text from her saying, all right, I've stopped vomiting, Joe. Do you want me to come to the meeting? <laughs> no. No, 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 yeah, you can please stay well, We're good, yeah, yeah. <laughs> thanks. Um, but I know Jen really wanted to speak passionately about this, and she and I have been doing some brainstorming. Um, I think we, uh, I think it would be very apropos if uh, Jen and Paul as a team had an opportunity to sit down with the school committee and kind of give a status update slash progress report on um, their thinking around some major middle school issues. And, and I think it kind of dovetails with them getting the ball rolling on scheduling issues. So things that we've discussed at the um, school committee level, um, some are very, very small things like uh, the scheduling of PE and health and how there's gaps, mm -hmm. the scheduling of various electives and how kids sometimes get shut out of specific electives, um, to larger issues like honors classes, honors level classes, the fact that, um, quite frankly, honors flies in the face of the middle school philosophy but also the political reality that, that this is something that's been established for three, four years now. Um, is there necessarily set criteria for honors classes? And how does that align with what we're doing operationally at the high school? Um, and then the larger issue of uh, special education services and the delivery of those services, um, and kind of a vision moving forward vis-a-vis uh, -vis, uh, the district vision of greater inclusion opportunities. So that's an awful lot there. Um, I think kind of in uh, kicking it around with Jen and Paul, uh, we c came to the mindset of, wouldn't it make sense if we just had a nice block of time as uh, the, 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 the middle school uh, admin team along with the school committee to kind of discuss this issue, all of these issues, and come to consensus of what's best for the school moving forward. Um, so that's kind of the long and short of it. Um, I'd like to be able to commit to a specific date. I know I posited a Saturday morning. It doesn't have to be a Saturday morning. I just figured people might be a little bit better Refresh on a Saturday morning than on a, a an evening after work or whatever. Um, but that's something that I'd like to put forward and um, possibly come up with a date. You know, within the next four to six weeks that uh, we could commit as a group. I'm good with that, and I'm fine with a Saturday. Saturday's work. 
cool. Yeah, they work for me as well. Yeah. And I agree. After a long day. Yeah. I don't think two to three hours. Like I don't think it's I not the best. Yeah. Group, most <laughs> I mean, we could do it time. as a school yeah. committee meeting, but I just think you you get to the point where it's the law of diminishing returns, mm -hmm. and right. mm -hmm. I think this is something that the vision would be giving people material well in advance to digest, to formulate some questions, yeah. Jen and Paul, and to a degree myself and Maureen, kind of presenting some ideas and, you know, and coming, and coming to consensus. Does that run into open meeting law problems? Or? No, it would be a posted post meeting. It would be a workshop, good. but it would be posted. So it would be open to the public. Well. Absolutely. Uh, okay, good. Excellent. Do you need me there? Uh, sure. <laughs> Are Saturdays a no-go for you? Or I, I mean, exactly you should know what I just need to know in advance. <laughs> I know. You should have said I can't be there. <laughs> so, um, time span, you said four to six, next four to uh, six It would weeks be job? ideal because I'm trying to be sensitive to when they get the ball rolling on the schedule process, and I think her vision is getting that ball rolling late February and March. And this is, this is given all the input that we've gotten from the school um, committee as well, right? Not school school council, council, absolutely. Okay, yeah. good, good, good. So they're, you're going to incorporate that into what we're Absolutely, okay. yeah. Yep, understood. So I don't know if you had any ideas in mind, but we've got 20th, 27th, 3rd, 10th of February. 27th was February, by the way. 27th is fine for me. Of January? Yep. Mm -hmm. I cannot do that date. Okay. Uh, yeah. yeah. I can be there, but I know I can't be there. What, what, if we're asking you to be there, what is open in your calendar? Um, I'm fine for any time in February. Okay. Because okay. did you want to go that far out or? Third could work. Um, third is the third. third. The third works for me. Okay. Tenth is less good. The third, third looks good. The third is fine with me. So and third is, in the morning. Okay. So nine to twelve. Yeah, want to block out yeah. nine and to and have twelve as a hard stop. And if it's less than twelve, so be it. Okay. Here. That's what I was going to ask. Uh, yes, it would be here. And I think that lines up because the next day the Patriots will be in the Super Bowl, so <laughs> it'll just be a great yeah, weekend all around. Yeah, today. Yeah. Thank you very much. Um, do we have any correspondence? I didn't have any. Um, no, not that I know of, unless Diane, what you received was for the entire school. <laughs> solicitation like yeah that. it's just a follow-up from um, mask okay. some uh, conference or one of the sessions I went to and it is look like they want business <laughs> solicitation <laughs> solicitation mm -hmm. um, other ma matters not anticipated by the committee within 48 hours of the posted meeting then future agenda items approval of the um, 1819 MURSD calendar on January 29th and the presentation of the MURSD FY 2019 first pass budget also on the 29th. Anything else? Okay, cool. Do we have a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Meeting adjourned at 739.